RZ. My name's Stan. Uh, tonight we're going to uh, set up the OD grinder um, for cutting angles. And we're going to be using the compound and I'm going to show you how to dress the wheel of the grinder parallel with the axis of the uh, compound. And then after the grinder is bolted to the compound and you cut the wheel and it's parallel with the axes, you don't touch that ever again. You can swing the compound all you want, but leave the grinder bolted to the compound after you've dressed the wheel. And that way you can change angles. You can run it at 30 degrees and do a 60 degree included. You can swing it over and make some other cuts at whatever angles you want uh, after you've dressed the wheel. But uh, it's, it's pretty easy to do. You know, you just gotta think about what's going on in there. And what we're using tonight, uh, we're not really holding any dimensions or anything. All we're doing is cutting a 60 degree angle um, so we're, uh, we're actually using a rubberized, that's a rubberized abrasive, which is kind of, they call it a polishing wheel. And this is a medium. It's only available in three grades. It's uh, coarse, medium, and fine. Uh, we're going to be using a fine wheel, uh, to put a point on a uh, center punch. And, um, uh, that's all that's left for this, uh, Toolmakers, uh, uh, compilation for, uh, the Keith Finner giveaway. And... Um, after this, these uh, tools go off to uh, Razor Ray. All right, so uh, let's get over on the lathe and, and get the wheel set up and dressed, and then we'll uh, move on to uh, cut that little center punch. I've got some other things to do on the OD grinder too, so I need to set it up anyway, so uh, uh, this was one of them. All right, uh, thanks for watching. Okay, now we got the center punch chucked in. And uh, here, let's see if we can get this thing to focus. Voila. No, it's not focusing. Here it kind of is. Uh, just got to gonna run it backwards real slow. And we just got a little tick on it, and we're way out at the tip of that thing, but you can see the hoop de doo the rest of it's doing. Um, over here, so I got a I got a speed wobble here, but all we're going to be doing is grinding the tip. So uh, we're we're pretty happy there. And uh, I thought I'd show off my mag base a little bit. This is one of the newer Nogas um, permanent magnet. You can't turn the magnet off and on, but look how thin it is. And you see how it snaps in between the V way and the flat way of the lathe. And what's unique about this? is uh, the, the zero adjust. There's your zero adjust and the fine adjust there. But I can take and swing this thing in any direction. If you back this off, this rotates around. So now I can swing it in that direction. I can swing it in that direction. I can pull it away. Left, right, whatever. So this, th I thought this was pretty slick. And uh, here I'm just kind of rolling it into the, uh, to the work right now. And you got a real nice adjustment. It's very stable, very comfortable feeling. Good but anyways, back to our center punch. Um, we've got it. All we're going to do is grind the point. So that's what I indicated on. Uh, again, with the aluminum angles on the knurls. And I'm out on the, on the tip. And you can see the little tick I got there. I got about a, about a half thou tick. If we can focus on that. Okay. Anyways, let's get uh, let's get set up with a grinder, get a get a wheel dressed, and uh, get a tip on that thing. Okay, and we're getting set up for the, uh, the dressing of the wheel. I've got a diamond holder in the tailstock, just mounted in a chuck. Um, that's a little clevis that I made that, that just chucks up in a uh, into the tailstock, and it holds a, a three eighths diamond. And you want your diamond on center. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to use the axes of the uh, compound. Uh, we've already bolted the tool post grinder to the compound. They're going to remain bolted together throughout this operation. Now you can swing your compound all you want. But uh, the trick here is, is to uh, move the compound on its axes and cut the wheel. To resist the urge to just move the tailstock in and out and cut it because you could if you don't have your tool post grinder mounted on there absolutely perfectly and your compound uh, set up absolutely on zero, um, you might not get a, a true wheel cut. 
but if you uh, just move your compound in and out and leave the uh, tail tail stock fixed and locked, um, you're assured that you're going to be cutting your wheel and dressing the wheel uh, parallel with the axes of the machine. So here we're going to start just by uh, trimming a little bit on this back from our last grind. You can see the wheel cleaning up really nice. Um, and these rubberized abrasives don't throw a lot of sparks. Uh, they do throw a lot of uh, rubber dust and rubber mess and it is very abrasive so you still want to protect your machine. You see we've got uh, rags uh, all around to, to catch all the uh, fragments that are coming off that wheel. Uh, but even when you're grinding you don't see a lot of sparks and uh, these wheels are surprisingly cool running. Um, they're not really good for holding dimension uh, but they polish like you wouldn't believe. They leave a finish that's absolutely beautiful. And uh, if you ever get a chance uh, to try out an, a, a rubberized abrasive wheel, uh, just try it out. And they are available only in three grades. Uh, they, they come in uh, coarse, medium, and fine. So, uh, all right, let's uh, get on to uh, cutting our tool. Okay, and we're just getting set up here, and let's have a quick look at the drawing. Uh, it's drawn at 120 degrees, so that's uh, 60 degrees per side. And we're going to um, go ahead and set the compound at 60 degrees and see how that looks. That seems to be too flat to me, but uh, let's get it set up and uh, get a look at it and see what we think it's going to look like.
Okay, and I just barely got to it and just kind of kissed it a little bit, and I wanted to see what it looked like and the angle that I was cutting in comparison with what was already there. And I was actually making it even more blunt at this angle. So 120 degrees might be okay for a big wampus uh, center punch that you're going to hit with a uh, you know a, a four pound double jack or a single jack hammer uh, for banging on I-beams but this is a tiny little fussy center punch and I think I want to put a 30 degree per side angle on it uh, 60 degree included so this is my first official revision sorry Randy Okay, so uh, we're starting to see a point develop here, and I'm, I'm liking the way this point's looking. Uh, that's how I sharpen all my small center punches is uh, um, 30 degrees per side. And uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I've, uh, the, uh, the, the carriage is locked, the cross slide I feed in, and then the compound I keep traversing back and forth. So I'm just slowly feeding in the cross slide in couple thousands per time and just making passes across that uh, um, center punch just to develop a point and I'm using the full width of the wheel I'm going all the way across till it passes off and then making a pass back after another thousandth or so in feed and just moving all the way across the wheel and the lathe is uh, spinning backwards you can't really tell from the looks of it, but it is spinning backwards because uh, the wheel is turning down. And uh, there we've developed a de developed a point. And uh, I'm going to show you a close-up picture here in a little bit, but uh, pretty fast and easy. Okay, so our little set's done. Um, this one's already to size, so there's really nothing I can do with this. Um, I checked the drawing and. This uh, is already two dimensions, so it just gets hardened and nothing else. Um, this, all I did was put a point on it. I'm going to include a photograph of a close-up I did, because my camera is having a hard time focusing up close. And then this is the pin punch you saw me do the other the other night. So uh, this is getting wrapped up and going to uh, Ray Goff, also known as Razor Ray. All right, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the OD grinder and setting it up for a... Uh, for an angle cut.